also asks for Professor Ernst to speak here, but he's not yet arrived. I didn't know where he is. Uh, oh, well, we'll stop now. Uh, we'll invite Amadeo Sharma to speak something about him. First of all, it's it's a pretty sad thing to be uh, to have to speak um, at uh, such an event for because WIMBETS used to be at so many European skeptics congresses, and as was already mentioned, many of us feel, especially when we are at the European skeptics congress, and uh, it's being held in Belgium, that somebody is missing. So I think it's very appropriate that uh, that Tim and others have arranged for this opening session to uh, honor. Wimbets. He's, by the way, one of the only, or one of the two only uh, uh, people to have received the uh, Outstanding Skeptics Award from um, from EXO, which was conveyed to him um, in uh, 2012 at the uh, World Skeptics Congress in Berlin um, in um, uh, a couple of years back. But his uh, overall contribution to the skeptics movement has been outstanding and as has been pointed out a couple of times already, he's been inspirational for many of us, for the methods, for the way he communicated things. And over the uh, decades, he has been the leading voice against pseudoscience uh, of all kinds. I mean, many of us know it. Uh, we've seen some more facets of what he's done in the previous talks. Um, he had a particular focus and interest for homeopathy, but it went far beyond that. And he was always, uh, in, in the way he conveyed things, friendly, and uh, he always had quite a bit of humor in the way he said things. So I think that is also something that many skeptics can learn from. Uh, one of the things I remember very well is the uh, individual remedies that he would, there were a large number of them. They were so hilarious when you explain why a homeopathic uh, remedy was supposed to work, uh, that uh, this is something that uh, many of us have taken up. I've done so to use these kind of examples about how ridiculous and how crazy some of these homeopathic claims are. At the international level, he was a strong critic also um, of uh, alternative medicine. He was a critic of the World Health Organization that had been advocating and still does implement complementary and alternative uh, medicine in national health services, looking also at traditional um, forms of quackery. And um, he pointed out very clearly that he thought that this endangers, it jeopardizes global public health and that such a promotion of quackery, which includes several forms of traditional medicine, is really a danger for the people and for the health of people worldwide. He went so far as to even attack um, and to warn against uh, quacks at the WHO who were in complete opposition to evidence-based medicine. It was also pointed out it was not just homeopathy and some of these forms. He also looked, took on uh, facilitated communication where he showed, among other things, that the results of many of the experiments, for example, with coma patients, were purely fabricated. At the European Union, he was also active and he was at a committee where he was the only skeptic amongst a lot of uh, homeopaths and uh, practitioners of uh, anthroposophic medicine. And I remember one of the incidents where at a dinner table, I think once he said that he was once approached by the homeopaths to, for help against the really crazy proponents of anthroposophic medicine. <laughs> so uh, this was one of the, uh, even you see that within uh, quackery, there are some shades of differences. He's been a role model for many of us. He was elected fellow of the Committee of Skeptical Inquiry, CSI, previously PSYCOP, and uh, was a regular author at the, for the magazine Skeptical Inquirer. He was a guest of honor at the Sixth World Skeptics Congress, where he received the Outstanding Skeptics Award, and he spoke at previous um, uh, World Skeptics Congresses as well, for example, at the Fifth World Skeptics Congress, which was held in Albano Term in, uh, in Italy, on a session on how alternative uh, medicine can be a hazard for health. So as we see, and as we've seen in many of the examples before, he was really very prominent in the skeptical movement, not just in Belgium, not just in Europe, but really worldwide. But he was also a great person. 
And I think it was always a great experience to be sitting uh, next to him at a dinner table where he would tell us a lot of the very amusing and sometimes not so amusing encounters that he ha he's had with uh, the proponents of pseudomedicine. So with this, I would like to also convey sin sincere condolences from the German organization, GWUP, but also convey them from the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry um, in, the, in the US. He was one of the real greats of the skeptical movement, and uh, we will miss him. <laughs>